What a joy and privilege it is to address you as rector of this church. Today is a day when we as a group of people gather together in the presence of God, in the name of Jesus Christ, to reflect on the past year. It is a day to think of how we've worshipped, prayed, given, and shared as a spiritual family. Today is a time for us to reflect on the anxieties and joys expressed, individuals baptized, people united in marriage, and people mourned and buried from this place over the past year. Indeed, dear friends, it is a time for us to remember our calling to be lights of the world in our generation. And how apropos is the gospel reading for today? Today's gospel tells of the mission Jesus declared for himself and his church. Filled with the power of the Spirit, Jesus declared, The Spirit of the Lord is on me, because he has anointed me to preach good news to the poor. He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to proclaim release to the captives, recovering of sight to the blind, to deliver those who are crushed, and to proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord. This was a defining moment in the life of Jesus. Throughout his ministry, we come to know him as the suffering servant, whose purpose is to give hope to the poor, sight to the blind, release to the captive, and liberation to all who are oppressed. That too, dear friends, is the raison d'etre of the church, our reason for being. Through each of us, all who are baptized into his body, Jesus tries to live out his mission statement, bringing good news to those who don't have any, setting free those chained in captivity, be it in body, mind, or spirit, opening blind eyes, helping the oppressed and exploited find a life, and sharing God's good news to all. Our job as the church is to continue to strive to be followers of Jesus Christ and to live out that mission. That's why this will continue to be a church where all are welcomed. And welcoming we have been in our fellowship and in our outreach and in our worship experience. Last year, we were extremely happy to welcome several new parishioners, including James Shelley, Peter Branton, Sam Bethune, Tom, Teresa, and Thomas Bethune, as well as little Cara Michelle, daughter of Steve and Abigail Whitbecker, into the fold. We are also delighted that they have joined our congregation and have assimilated well. Sam is now the leader of our book club, for which we are deeply thankful. And Jim is now enjoying Adult Forum. I'm sure Tony and Sheila are pretty glad. Both Jim and Peter have become chalice bearers. These families have already made a great impact in our church and on our church, and we look forward to their continued involvement. Please join me in welcoming them to our congregation officially. During the year, we also had two baptisms. Ava Elizabeth, daughter of Jake and Nikki Gunaris, and Evelyn Monica, daughter of Lisa and Alan Cheney, and granddaughter of the one Bruce Johnson. They were both lovely occasions and a reminder to us that each person is an important part of our life here at St. G's. Of course, they were both intrigued by your dashingly handsome priest. We also had several weddings throughout the year. Congratulations to Jim and Karen Held on the marriage of their daughter Sarah to James Turner, to Todd and Patty Lutton on the marriage of their son Nick to Kirsten, to Greg and Beth Hester on the marriage of their daughter Emily to Jesse Muller, and to Ryan and Christina Hagerman, friends of mine. I know your parents are glad to get rid of, I mean, I know your parents are happy that you're all married, but we are too. They were all beautiful and elegant weddings, and a great time was had by all. We wish each of you much love, joy, and happiness in your future marriage. One of our more notable celebrations was the confirmation of 14 of our youth. What a blessing that was. 
It is always a joy to see young people make a decision to confirm their walk in Christ. Our prayer is that God will continue to lead them into paths of righteousness and besides still waters, but also that they will seek and live for God all the days of their life. Our heartfelt gratitude is also extended to Bishop Knudsen, who officiated the Eucharist and confirmation and shared with us in that glorious moment. We also held an acolyte and lay readers retreat in March 2018. It was well attended and quite a learned experience for us all. The young, not so young, and the young at heart came together to better understand the church. That was very encouraging. We hope this event will continue as a regular event for the acolytes and chalice bearers and lay leaders and, of course, interested individuals. Our worship experience at St. G's continues to be a joyous and spiritually edifying one, especially with the children's involvement during the Eucharist. It is so true that kids say the darndest things. Their sheer honesty and energy adds so much life and vitality to our congregation. I can't imagine not having them as part of the St. George's family. So yes, go and have more children and grandchildren and let the little children come unto Jesus. Be that as it may, we are so grateful to our children's choir, Sunday school and youth group for the wonderful work they do and for being such a blessing to us all. Our average Sunday service attendance this past year increased to 89 as opposed to 84 in 2017. During Lent, we conducted Stations of the Cross in which the children participated. We also had Mass on the grass during the summer months, and it was the best attended in my time here. We sat around the fireplace donated and built by Eagle Scouts Alex and Ben Ritter, and we engaged in much laughter and fun. My hope is that we can continue to celebrate in this way during the summer months. All other celebrations and accomplishments have been duly noted in the other reports, so I will not belabor them. However, while there were many celebrations in our midst, we also suffered and experienced loss. Unfortunately, Gail James, Sandy Duffy, Emily Durham, and Louise Holiday continue to struggle with illness and are no longer able to join us on a regular basis for worship. We continue to pray, however, for their healing. We also lost the Heinz family of Florence, Grace, and Caroline, as Florence accepted a new job out of state. The Bond family also relocated to Pennsylvania, which has made it difficult for them to join us on a regular basis. These individuals and families were an integral part of our congregation, and we miss them dearly. May we continue to pray for their strength, guidance, and blessing in their new spiritual homes. Last year, we also experienced the unfortunate death of Ron Bond Jr. and Ernest Canohan, father of Leslie G. A memorial service will be held for Ron this coming year, and a funeral service was held for Ernest last year. May they rest in peace, and may God comfort each of their families and strengthen them in the days ahead. As I have mentioned in previous years, one aspect of this parish that I've always found to be inspiring is that often people step up at the right moments with the right gifts, energy, and experience to take on tasks. In the second reading today, Paul reminds us that we have the gifts to do this ministry and that we are not alone in doing so. In that regard, I say thank you first and foremost to God above for his many blessings and for the many gifts he has endowed this congregation with. I say thank you also to many individuals who have stepped up over the past year and shared their gifts and talents with the church. Many thanks to Leah Rayburn, 
who represented our congregation at diocesan convention this past year. Thank you also to Beth Hester, leader in our stewardship committee, but also for her gift to the parish that added brightness to the foyer between the office and the church. To our outgoing vestry members, Bruce Johnson, Nicole Wareham, and Jennifer Christman, thank you for serving. May God bless you all, and we look forward to your continued involvement in the church. Joining the vestry will be Beth Walsh, Nicholas Lutton, and Linda Goodman, and we look forward to their gifts and new insights. The vestry also bids farewell to Tom Custins, our junior warden, who has done a stellar job over the past five years. Perhaps he is appropriately named Thomas because he has become known as the light bulb man. Tom, on behalf of the vestry, I thank you for your astuteness, diligence, hard work, reliability, and supreme efficiency. You have served well, and we are eternally grateful for all that you have helped us to accomplish over the past years. Your work and services rendered were very much like another Tom I know. Shall we say, Tom Brady? Yeah, you were always on top of your game. Thank you. Replacing Tom will be Andy Cunningham. We look forward to what Andy will bring, and I know that he is eager to do so. So I ask that you keep him in your prayers as he undertakes this great work. To Ralph and Diane, the choirs for blessing us with music each week. May God continue to bless you as you gift us with the gift of music. And all of the commission heads who are incredibly gifted, creative, and hardworking, we say thank you. Your work continues to elevate St. G's to a place where people want to worship, where people enjoy worshiping, where people long to be a part. It's because of you I look forward to ministry many days. You help to make my ministry here an enjoyable one. To the vestry, thank you for your leadership and insight. You help ensure that we stay true to our values and be a parish of integrity. Of course, the work we do could not be done without the help of our beloved administrator, Joanne O'Brien, who endeavors her best to keep me on tasks and to keep us connected each week. Thank you, Joanne, for your warmth and hard work. Thank you to all those who substituted for her throughout the year, to Dottie and Diane, who did such a wonderful job. Every year, I am delighted to thank our talented bench of lay leaders, including Steve Blythe and Allegra Simonek, who work arduously to ensure that Sunday services run smoothly, the church is always well kept, and we always have enough people here to serve. You make my work that much easier and ministry with you both is a delight. Our youth leaders, especially Dottie Lucas, Beth and Nancy Walsh, Mary Jo Custins, Andy Cunningham, and Andrew Fiakos, many thanks to you for the work you're doing with our young people. And of course to Diane Garrett who has helped to lead and organize book club this past year. We are also thankful to the wider diocese for their continued financial assistance offered to our parish. And to you, the parishioners of this noble church, thank you for your undying support. From the choir to the ushers, to Emily who provides us with beautiful flowers, to Todd and Linda who ensures that our fundraisers is also a great joy, to our tellers, to our bingo team of Mary Jo, Jan, and Julie, and to each person in the pew. Muchas gracias. Thank you. I want to thank you, all of you, for your ongoing support and involvement in our ministries. Your ministries of prayer, action, outreach, teaching, serving in so many ways are what enable us to not just go to church, but to be church. I want you to know 
that I pledge my continuing prayers and faithfulness to God as your rector. I am so humbled and grateful that we get to play our part in undertaking the mission of God. But I know that God still has work for us to do, and I'm excited. I'm looking forward to 2019, to 2020, and beyond. We are Jesus' church. Our witness, including how we treat one another, how we love one another, is of utmost importance to the world. There is much more for us to do and to be in this world as we carry out the mission of Jesus. Of course, that requires a lot of planning, a lot of involvement, and I look forward to it with all of you. In the ensuing months, you will hear much more about our hopes and plans moving forward. As always, for now, my hope is that we can continue to grow bigger and stronger. But as we do so, we also need to grow smaller and deeper. Deeper in commitment. Smaller in our egos. So that we keep God first in all that we do. Further, I welcome your questions and comments on what I've shared with you and about any aspect of our life at St. G's and of course my role as rector following this meeting or any time in the future. Thank you and God bless.